Hi, and welcome to the Stack Tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to work with multi-part questions. Our example will be this question about finding the line tangent to a polynomial at some point. It's broken into three parts. One asking the student to find the derivative. A part asking the student to evaluate that derivative at a point and then a final part asking the student to find the equation of the tangent line. I'll show you how to make questions with multiple input boxes, and then I'll show you how to do follow through marking. I've set up this basic version of the question. Its question variables are the expression to be differentiated, the point, the answer to the first part using diff to find the derivative, the answer to the second part using subst to substitute the point into the answer for the first part. And then the answer for the third part. I use the remainder method to find the equation of the line tangent, but you could also substitute values into a y equals mx plus c equation. Then I've written the basic question text you saw before, referring to any maxima variables that are relevant. Now by default there is just one input box and one validation box, referring to the input variable ants1. You can actually include as many of these as you want. We'll start by moving this up to the first part, and then we'll add a pair for each part of the question. Part 2 will be referring to the variable ants2, and part 3 to the variable ants3. When we save, this will automatically create three more input sections. Additionally, we want each part to have its own potential response tree algorithm and also to show its own feedback. By default, the feedback box is given under the specific feedback section, as this gives Moodle more control over when feedback is shown. However, for multiple part questions, it's useful to have the feedback come directly beneath the part of the question. And again, we can add as many of these as we want. And if we have them refer to different potential response trees, this one I'll call PRT2, and this one PRT3, then when we save, new potential response trees will be created. So let's save this question. And then scrolling down, you can see that we now have three input boxes and three potential response tree boxes. We'll add in model answers for each input box. These are the ones we defined as TA1, TA2, and TA3. And for now, I'm just going to create really simple potential response trees that in each case just checks that ANS1 is equal to TA1, and so on. So for potential response tree 2, it'll be ANS2 against TA2. And for potential response tree 3, we'll do ANS3 against TA3. Let's save and preview. So here you can see each part has been given its own input box with its own validation box, each having its own feedback box. Now notice that part two isn't necessarily asking for the correct answer, just that the student has evaluated their answer to part one correctly. So let's add some follow through marking for this. For potential response tree two, Instead of checking that ANS2 is equal to TA2, we'll check that they've substituted the point correctly into their answer for the first part. We'll do this once again with the function subst. Let's add another node. And then from the first node, if they have correctly substituted in their answer, We'll send them on to node 2. 
and check if they got the first part correct. So if ants1 was equal to ta1. If that's not true, that means they got the first part wrong, but they substituted it correctly into the second part. So I'll write a note, something along the lines of answer to this part is correct. However, you have got part one wrong. Please try both parts again. Let's save and preview. So now if we give some wrong answer to part one, for example, x, but substitute in x equals two correctly, you can see that when we check, we still get the first one wrong, but because of the follow through marking, we now get the second part right. And that concludes this tutorial. You should now be able to work with multi-part questions in Stack.